once you have graphed those two systems, you should be able to tell me some information, or once you've graphed those two systems, idiot. Once you've graphed those two lines, which are the lines that are associated with the equations of this system, you should be able to tell me some stuff. What can you tell me about this system? He waited patiently. Nobody can tell me anything about this system. We, Karen, they cross, which tells us what about the system? Okay. Hmm? Yeah, what does that tell us about the system? Karen's right, they cross, that tells us something. What does the crossing of two lines give us? I will try to rephrase this question into some way that it will allow me to get an answer from the 30 brains in the class that we have just spent studying five day, four days worth of systems. What do you know about that point where they cross? Jacob. It was already a system. That point is a very special point. What is it? I've got 80 minutes, so I got plenty of time. How can a point be perpendicular? I'll say it again because we need the response. What is special about that spot where they cross? Mm, getting warmer. Almost there. It's the solution. Good job. So what conclusions can we draw from this graph once we graphed it? What does the fact that they cross tell us? There's the next line. Did it hit that point? No. So what does the fact that they cross once tell us? Right. There's one solution to this system. Whew. There's another system. Graph it.
these instructions tell us to compare the properties of the line and each form of the equations. What do you see when you compare those two things? Last, they are parallel. How did you know that? The slopes are the same. The slopes are the same. So what did that mean was going to happen here? They're never going to what? They're never going to intersect. The equal slopes... give us parallel lines. Therefore, there can be how many solutions? How many solutions does this system have? None. There can be no solutions. Why? Why? Right, because they'll never intersect. Sweet. Now, guess what? You're going to do this a third time. Would you ever leave that red line like it is? What would you do with it, Izzy? You would simplify it. Of course you would. And what do you find? They're the exact same line, aren't they? If I were to graph the blue one at positive 5 thirds, now how would I graph that blue one? Because there's a fraction involved. I, I could go up to 1 and 2 thirds, which would be right there. Or better, I would go 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. Change the scale. 5 thirds. And the slope was negative two-thirds, so down two, out three. There would the blue line be. And then where would the red line be? The exact same spot. How many times do those lines touch? All the time. Infinitely, yes? So what conclusions can we make? If two equations graph the same line, then there's how many solutions? Infinite solutions. Everybody understand? So just looking at this, no solving, so no graphing, no substitution, no elimination. Just by looking, can you tell me how many solutions that's going to have right now? Or do you have to do something? You could do it in your head. Or you could do what on paper? Not solve, because I don't want the solution. I just want to know how many solutions there are. 
What were the hints? Why did this guy have no solution? Because they're parallel. What's the hint to parallel? Same slope. Why did this guy have infinite solutions? Same slope and same y-intercept. Why did this guy have one solution? Same slope. Didn't have to be perpendicular. Different slope. If there's a different slope, they're going to cross at some point. So, once again, we come back to that thing I told you back about at the very beginning of Unit 6. What's the very powerful concept for all three of these last units? Slope. Find slope. How can I find that slope? What would I do? What do you do, Derek? I thought you said it. Somebody over there said it. How do I find slope? Right. It's a two-word answer. Starts with I, ends with E. Has so late in the middle of it. Isolate Y. I heard a, a male voice say isolate Y. I thought it was him. Well, then why would you say it? Say it. No, be strong. Isolate Y. There you go. <laughs> Isolate Y. So here, 2Y equals negative X. Do I even care about the 6? Normally, I don't care about the 6, but do I need to be careful about the 6 here? Maybe, because it might end up not only having the same slope, it might end up having the same Y-intercept. And if it has the same Y-intercept, how many solutions does it have? Infinite. Plus 6, so y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Then I check the other one. y equals negative x minus 2. What do you see? Are those slopes the same? So how many solutions? 1, because as soon as the slopes are different, they have to cross somewhere. What about b? 5y equals negative 3x plus 9. y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 9 fifths. y is already isolated. y equals, double check your order, negative 6 tenths x plus 18 tenths. How many solutions? Infinite. Why, Hayden? Those don't look the same to me. Of course they're the same when you simplify, because when do we simplify? Always. Every single fraction you see from now until the end of your math career, what should you be doing if you can? Simplifying. And that, of course, becomes negative 3 fifths x plus 9 fifths. So that has infinite solutions. Now, obviously, since we're doing notes, this is going to be the no solution one. But we'll do it anyway. Why is it weird? Because I used P and Q instead of X and Y. Why would I do that to you? To show us, to show us, <laughs> to show you that it doesn't matter because it's just independent variable, dependent variable. Any letters would work. I could do two lightning bolt minus five peace sign and it would still work. Okay. So I'm going to isolate. Does it matter which one I make X or Y? Does it matter? No, because we're just checking for the slope, right? So if I'm going to isolate Q, then it's going to be negative 5Q equals negative 2P plus 30. Q equals 2 fifths P minus 6. In this case, what's the slope? P is the X, so what's the slope? Two-fifths. If I had isolated P, I would have had a different slope, but that doesn't matter, does it? Because I'm only checking for what, how many solutions it's going to have. So since I isolated Q, i got to isolate Q here. It's already isolated. So Q equals four-tenths P minus 15 over 10, which I then simplify to two-fifths P minus 
three halves. Two fifths, two fifths, six, three halves. Same slope, different y intercept, zero solutions. A very easy thing to check if you have a complicated system, right? If you drop it into slope intercept form, you see it's got the same slope and a different y intercept, you know it's not going to have any solution. So do you have to bother with substitution or elimination? No, because there's no chance of finding the same solution, right? Everybody good? There's a little bit of work on that, but it's, I mean, it's so easy, I'm skipping over it because I have found in the last couple of years, most of you need extra time with word problems. So we're, I, if you want to do a little practice with properties of systems, you got a page for it. Everybody seems okay with it because it all comes down to slope. These you guys aren't so hot at. Of course, we start, as always, with not real life, just math. Here's all the instructions. This is key. This is what all of you will refuse to do because it doesn't actually have math. This is the work that all of you, eh, I don't want to do that, Meh. and you won't do it. Even though if you do that, you can't, there's no, way to not be able to figure out a word problem okay so actually it's that whole first step what am i looking for always there's going to be unknowns in a word problem yes always or why would the word problem be there now many people always say oh mr myers no such thing as a word problem in real life you're right there's no such thing as a word problem in real life in real life you just have a problem you got to figure out the question. In math class, they actually tell you what to look for and how to do it. In the real world, you got to figure all of that out. So, let's identify what we are looking for. What are we looking for in number one? We're looking for two numbers, right? That's it. Two numbers. So, we have how many unknown things? Two. Everybody agree? So now we're going to do the second part. Write let statements. Now, I've had many math teachers that would not even mark my work if I didn't write a let statement, which means I would have to write out this. Don't write right now. Let x equal the first number. And then... I would have to write, let y equal the second number. And my math teachers, if you didn't write that, wouldn't have even marked your work. Of course, this is the 21st century. The 1980s were left back in the 1980s. I am not like those math teachers. But I did say this is a very important step, didn't I? Can this be written more mathy, shorter, and easier? Of course it can. Number one equals X. Number two equals Y. Easy peasy, right? Everyone agree? Do I have to use X and Y? Of course not. I could use A and B. I could use Q and T. I could use lightning bolt dollar sign. It wouldn't matter. Everyone understand? But... Once you've done this, then solving math problems is super easy. Now, a great many of you over the course of your math careers have been given a way to solve these word problems. You've got what's called an algorithm. And you look at it and your teachers said, if it does this, do this. And you're like, yeah, I got it. The problem with that is if you change the wording or something, you're screwed. Right? So, we had number one equaled X. I don't know where all the lines are going. Ooh, that's impressive. Number one equals X. Equals X. Equals X. There we go. Number two. Oh! Equals Y. Equals. Equals. All right. 
Next thing. Write. Pretend I'm highlighting the second line. Use your imagination. Write two equations. Why do I need two equations? Because I got two unknowns. The fir- and I even tell you, each sentence, you know what, I'm just going to close this off so my, num- my writing stops disappearing. What equation could I write from that? X plus Y equals 176. Agreed? What equation could I write from that? X minus Y equals 48. Do I have a system now? So all I do is solve it. Which of those three would I not use? Which of those three ways of solving a system would I not use? Graphing. Graphing. Which of those three should I use? What one is already set up to rock? Elimination is set up right now, isn't it? Because what would happen if I added those equations, Jacob? The Y would disappear, right? Now, if I wanted to do substitution, I'd just have to do one little bit of algebra, wouldn't I? I would have to isolate any one of those variables and I'd be fine. Who makes that choice? You do. Unless I specifically say, use elimination here. The only reason I would ever do that is why. Why would I ever force you to pick one? To show me that you can do both. Okay? So, Jacob called for elimination. Let's eliminate. What is X? Am I adding or subtracting these equations? I am adding. Because y plus negative y gets me zero. What is x plus x? 2x equals. What's 176 plus 48? 224. What would I do there? Divide by 2 and x will equal what? 112. So now I know 112 is the first part of my answer. What can I do with that now? Write it anywhere I see what? X. Anywhere I see X, I can write it. Where is the place that I don't want to write it? Right here. Because how will that find us Y? Right? I got to go back to one of my original equations. Which one do you guys want to use? Because I don't care. The top one? No problem. 112 plus y equals 176, y equals 176 minus 112, and x is, or y is 64. And I'm done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, even with word problems. What's the next one? Ooh, I got to go get me some chocolate bars. How am I going to solve this? How many unknowns do I have? How many unknowns do I have? Two. What are they? I got chocolate bars and I got pop. So... What letter should I give it? Okay, let's go C and P. Easy peasy. What does the first sentence tell me? Right there. Four C's plus 
3p equals 530. What does the second sentence tell me? 2c plus p equals 220. Is that a system? I can go ahead and solve it. What should I use? I would do substitution here. Why? Because I got a P right there by itself, right? So I would take that to be P equals 220 minus 2C. And then I would do my work. 4C plus 3, 220 minus 2C equals 530. 4C plus 660 minus 6C equals 530. Negative 2C plus 660 equals 530. Negative 2C equals negative 130. C equals 0.65. Whew! I remember back in the day when chocolate bars were 0.65. Chocolate bars are outrageous. Unless you go through the aisle at Save On, then there's always some on sale for a buck a bar. Two weeks ago, it was crunchy bars. I have a weakness for crunchy bars. I know that all of you look up at me and see there is no way that guy has any kind of weakness. Look at the shape he's in. But I do. I have a severe weakness for crunchies. Which is weird. Because when I was your age... I hated those things. When I got crunchies at Halloween, that was the first thing I traded out. The second thing I traded out were three musketeers because they're gross. I don't even know if they still have them. I'm a bounty man as well, but I prefer Almond Joy. You don't like bounty? My son got me a bag of bounty bars as part of my Christmas present. And he was like, Dad, I know that no one in the house but you likes these, so I bought them for you. So only you would get to eat them. It's like, wow, boy, thanks. And nobody ate them. Except me. Which is why they lasted a long time. Because although I have a weakness for chocolate bars, I also have self-control. And my little bag of mini bounties lasted until yesterday. Not bad, hey? Oh, I don't know. Oh, anyway, and then, of course, we finish. Once we know what C is, what do we do? Substitute it back in anywhere we want. What color do we feel like using? Hot pink. That one. So that C can go right there, can't it? P equal 220 minus 2 times 0.65 which is 220 minus 130, which is 90 cents. So how much was the pop? 90 cents. How much was chocolate bar? 65 cents. Now, the other thing my 1980s math teachers would do is if you didn't write a sentence answer at the end of it, they wouldn't mark it. Right? I don't really care. But you might want to come up here and go 0 0.65, 0 0.90. And I would be more than happy. I also have had teachers that said, well, you really should have written 65 cents and 90 cents. True story. To which, when I was the kid in the class, I, okay, Mrs. Bad Crumble, I'll do that next time. But now, if I could go back in time... And have a visit with Mrs. Bad Crumble and say, you know, you really made me hate math. And you made my high school years very difficult in math class. That's me. I don't know about you guys. That's me. And I would go back and find the hippopotamus guy. The guy that told me to remember the name of the hypotenuse by calling it the hippopotamus. 
And then when I wrote it on a test, he marked me wrong. That guy. I love you, Mr. Bailey. His name was Mr. Bailey. I don't know where he is now. He could be dead. Because when you're 11, 12, wait, how old was I in grade 7? When I was 12, when you're 12, anybody over the age of 30 is like about to die. Right? It, you, they seem so old. Don't lie. You guys all felt that. You feel it now. You see me up here. I'm 43. And you're like, Mike, every day I come here, you're like, oh, Myers made it another day. <laughs> Never would have guessed, man. Oh, dog, he's one old fart, that guy. You all do it. I'm okay with it. It's fine. But one day when I am teaching your children... I will not show up on a Wednesday. And you will all be like, what? He didn't show up? And then you'll all be like, he must have retired to Ecuador. But no, I'll be dead. <laughs> and then you'll feel sorry. <laughs> I got all the time in the world. I guess you didn't, Myers, and I didn't give you no answer. <laughs> Whoops. No, because one of you clowns would trip and pull the plug. What? Oh, it happens all the time. My mom had a teacher leave her class, walk out in the hall. This was in the, night, in the 60s. Open the door to the garbage incinerator and slide down. He left my mother's class. And my mom told me the story because I went to the same high school my mom did. I was like, Mom, you are so full of BS. That did not happen. That's an urban myth. Shut your pie hole. But it was my mom, so I was like, Mom, I don't think that really happened, right? But in my head, shut up, right? Because in my day, if you said shut up to your mom, it was punctuated by an exclamation point of a backhand across the face. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I would have gotten for saying shut up to my mom. I know this for a fact because one time I did say shut up, you, and I called her a feminine cleansing product. And she oh, no. belted me. Feminine cleansing product. You know what I am speak of what I speak. At any rate, we were at the donut shop and my mom smacked me across the face at the donut shop while I was having a sip of my ginger ale. It went flying. And then you know what she made me do? She made me get a mop and clean it up at the donut shop in front of everyone. But I'm okay with it now. I've got some distance from it. I can work with it. Hmm? It was a can. Because I love ginger ale. I love ginger ale. I have always loved ginger ale. I know it's weird. I know that on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, uh, main dude, Peralta, Peralta says, hates it. That one episode, he's like, I drank ginger ale, Gina. Ginger ale. I love it. Huh? Well, if you got to buy mainstream, you go Canada Dry. But if you're buying craft ginger ale, I like Sparkmouth. Sparkmouth is delicious. But you got to appreciate ginger ale. Anyway, um, yeah. So shut up, Mr. Bailey. My mom dying. I got nothing. I have no idea how we got there. I'm going to die... Tell your mom to shut up. Right. Yeah. I don't know. All right. What are my two unknowns and number three? This one messes kids up. This one, for some reason, this one kids have a lot of trouble with. I don't know why. Right. There's a startup fee. Oh, I remember why this one messes it up. And there's a monthly fee. So let's have some letters. What do you want to use? Surprise me. 
Do something innovative. F and Z? All right. Startup is F, monthly is Z. Okay. This is why it screws kids up. After one month, Jen has paid 260 bucks. How many startup fees has she paid? One. F. Plus, how many monthly fees has she paid? One. Z. Equals what? 260. What's the second equation? F plus 6Z. Because you only pay one startup fee. Equals 435. Now, it's already set up for one of our versions. What? Elimination. Should I add or subtract? Subtract. Because F minus F gives me nothing. So what is Z minus 6Z? Negative 5Z. What is 260 minus 435? Negative. If you can't do it in your head, get out your calculator. Negative 175. So what is Z? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Five times twenty-five. Thirty-five. So, what is the monthly fee? Thirty-five dollar. How do I figure that? Out? How do I figure out my startup fee? Substitute it in right there. F. Plus 35 equals 260. F equals 225. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, but that's what places like that, that's why they do it. You pay 225 to sign up. And then they take your credit card and they say, we're going to charge you 35 bucks a month on your credit card. And you say, yeah, no problem. I'm going to play tennis all the time. For one month. And then you never go again. And you look at your credit card statement. You're like, damn, I got to cancel that. And then the next month, they, re- they renew it on the 5th. And you don't look at your credit card statement until the 7th. They go, damn, I got to cancel that. Know how I know this happens? Because my wife signed up for Amazon Prime. Which is 112 bucks a year. And if you don't cancel it, they just renew it automatically. And they renew it for the whole year. So you forget about it until the next year. And then you got to pay again. And then she got Amazon Prime on American Amazon. Because she buys lots of American stuff. And that's okay. But I was like, well, at least we'll get Amazon Prime Video. No. Because she has an Amazon.com Prime. Not .ca. So then I would have to set up a VPN and pay 35 bucks a month anyway. I know, but VPNs cost 35 bucks a month. I'll give you, let's say, Jacob, would you like this free car? Or would you like this car you have to pay for? Yeah, of course you take the free ones. That's not going to cost you anything later in life. Nothing's free. You get a free VPN. You know what the company that offered you the free VPN is doing? Stealing all your data and selling it. So why get a VPN? (laughs) It's not doing you any good anyway. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It was funny. When we were in Ecuador, we had Netflix. But it's Netflix Ecuador, right? So it was the American Netflix. I had all the stuff that's on American Netflix. But the TV didn't have a stereo hooked up to it. It had crappy TV speakers. And we couldn't hear it ever. So we said, oh, we'll just put on the subtitles. But in Ecuador... All the subtitles were in Spanish. So it didn't help us at all. We'd put them on anyway and practice our Spanish. That's how my kids learn to read, playing rock band. Because the lyrics go across. And if you want to play, we wouldn't let them not sing. Everybody had to take turns. And the kid's like, I don't want anything. I don't know the words. Oh, and I guess you better learn to read. 
Kind of like in Splash when the mermaid learns English by watching TV commercials. If any of you have not seen Splash, I highly recommend it. It's from 1984. It's Tom Hanks' movie, back when he was still doing comedy. There's a mermaid. It's a great movie. It takes me to a wonderful place. It does. It's a great movie. It's very whimsical. And then, and then, that mermaid was in Kill Bill. You haven't seen? Yeah. Not Uma Thurman, the other blonde. The long blonde hair. Yeah, that's Daryl Hannah. That's the mermaid from Splash. And the last time you see her in a movie, she's always like, oh, all nice and happy. And then in Kill Bill, she's slaughtering everyone. It's difficult. Sorry. Not really a spoiler. The movie's called Kill Bill. There's a lot of killing. All right, last one, and then I'm shutting up. How many things are unknown? There's two investments, aren't there? There's investment one and investment two. Do we know how much money? Oh, we got to give them variables first. What should we give them? T and W. T and W. Why T and W? Just because? Okay. Oh, speaking of two, how do you guys spell the word toonie for a $2 coin? You all spell it T-O-O-N-I-E, don't you? I don't think that should be. I think it should be... No, it doesn't. What num? How do you say that word? Two. Yeah, it's a $2 coin. It should be a toonie. Did he say two dot T W O? It's because it's two loonies. That's stupid. The loony is called a loony because there's a loon on it. There's no uni on the two dollar coin. It's a polar bear and the queen. If anything, it should be the queen's bear ass. Because the bear is on the back side of the queen. Anyway, I got to thinking about that because I have a quick a clue on this crossword was it's worth a couple of bucks in Canada, and it's Toonie. So I'm spelling it T-O-O, and then I got to thinking, it should be T-W-O, because it's a two. But of course, you would read it as Twony, as you all did. Anyway, sorry, sorry. We're talking about money. There's two investments, T-W. I apologize. So what do we know about the two investments? Pardon me? So 8% of one plus 10% of the other equals how much interest? 190. What else do we know? How much money did I invest? 2,000. So T plus W must equal 2,000, right? What about that system bothers you? Hmm? You don't like the decimals. Is there something we're allowed to do to systems that will keep the same answer? We can multiply. What could we multiply this by if we wanted to get rid of those decimals? 10. Would 10 get rid of both decimals? Yep. So if I multiply this by 10, what do I get? 8t plus 0.10 times 10. 1 W equals what? 1,900. And now I can get rid of this guy, right? And I can bring this guy right here. Now, what am I set up for? Elimination. Subtraction or addition elimination? Why subtraction? Because the W's are the same sign. So what's T minus 8T? Negative 7T. What's W minus W? Nothing. What's 2,000 minus uh, 1,900? 100. What's T?
You should be stopping right now. Why? Because it's going to end up being negative, isn't it? Right? Is that possible? How can I invest a negative number? I can't, can I? So what have we done wrong? We've been following our steps, right? What did we do wrong? I'll give you a hint. It's in the very first thing I wrote. Because it's the mistake that every kid makes. And I do this every year because every kid does this poorly. T plus W is 2,000. That's okay. Jacob. But if I multiply by negative 10, then this 1,900 would be negative. Nope. So if I multiply the top equation, then I'm going to get 20,000. And I'm still going to have a positive and a negative. It's in the way I set it up. So this, we're getting out of here. We're getting back to here. Something is written poorly here. And I wrote it poorly because every kid writes it poorly. What is it? It's 0 0.08, isn't it? Because it's 8%. So I need two decimal places. So what do I need to multiply that by really? A hundred. And then I get 8T plus W equals 19,000. That's out of the way. Now we come in here. Now am I set up? Oh yeah, 10, 10 W. Now am I set up for what? I'm not set up right now for either of them, am I? I could do elimination if I multiplied something by what? 10 or 8. Or I could turn this into a substitution situation. We've done elimination the whole time, right? So I'm going to use substitution here, if that's okay with everyone. T equals that, so 8 times 2,000 minus W plus 10W equals 19,000. 16,000 minus 8W plus 10W equals 19,000. 2W equals 3,000. W equals 1,500. Then what do I do with that? Where's that go? Right there. And what's T equal? T equals... 500, W equals 1,500. Ease, peas, lemon, squeezy, yeah? Does it matter how complicated I make the words? I know it just died. That's a total death. I've never seen that. Hmm. <laughs> We shouldn't joke about that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, does it matter how complicated I make the words? No, because we're always, in grade 10, we're always looking for how many unknowns? Two. And you're always going to need how many equations? Two. Two. And the words are always going to find you those equations. Right? Okay. Um, without too much celebration, that was the last lesson of Math 10. Good job, everyone. 
No, seriously, good job. Math 10 is hard. Yeah. Math 10 is crazy difficult compared to the crap that you've been doing up till now. Right? The math you've been doing up till now is the rope toe at the ski hill. Math 10 is a blue square. It's like going from the rope toe to the blue square. That's a big jump. I'm very proud of you all. You all did very, very well. I know that I joke and sometimes act like you didn't, but you all did very, very well. Next year, still a blue square. Pre-calc 12, it's a black diamond. Calculus 12, double black diamond. They're rare. Not a lot of mountains have those. Okay? Everybody has chosen their move for next year, have they not? You haven't? Course planning? You haven't done it yet? Oh, you do it in career. Oh, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I remind you all, every one of you can go ahead and try pre-calc 11, if you wish. Every one of you can go ahead and try foundation 11, if you wish. I am not recommending any of you for a and 11. The only thing you have to seek out my recommendation for is if you wish to attempt IB. If you were wishing to attempt IB math, you have to come and see me sometime very soon because I have to make an official recommendation for you, okay? I cannot remember who four months ago said they were wanting to do IB, so you got to come and find me. I'm very easy to find. Follow the yelling guy and you will find me, okay? Okay. Um, Any questions about this? No? Excellent. So, you have some more practice you could do. Once again, the answers are there. I would recommend doing a couple of these. And then your last assignment for me is a review. Page 256. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is buyout day. I fully expect all of you to be not in my class tomorrow afternoon because you have been offered a way to get out of my class. So I'm expecting you all will be gone, which is why I did 8-4 and 8-5 today. I know, right? It's almost like I thought ahead. Did you say you're teaching a lesson tomorrow? I did. I did, and then I was like, why the hell bother? Because I forgot that 8-4 was that easy. Yes, go. Yes, go. So when he gets back. So when you go to the buyout game tomorrow, which I know is utterly important to all of you until the dismissal bell rings, then the stand's empty. I will not see most of you tomorrow. Which means that's a day for reviewing. uh, uh, That is, that's a lost class. Which means we will have to mark our review on Thursday And then the rest of Thursday's class and Friday will be spent reviewing the year. Okay? We will start that review with the worst performed unit on the unit test. So I will go to checkmymark.com, checkmyprogress.com. I will find the worst unit's score and we will work up from there by class average. Okay? Gouda? And I will also offer you the following. I have a great many of you will say every year this happens. Every year for 20 years. Every kid. The survivors can get a review package. Which of course I say you have one. It's that. And they say no, no, no. I want more. Okay. So I would print off like 40 page review packets. Which I would find strewn about the school in various places of garbage, completely not done. So I have changed my philosophy. I will give you a link to a document that exists on the internet. 
If you wish a review package, you will follow that link. You will print as much of it as you wish. And you will use as much of it as you wish. I will not waste resources nor my time giving you something that you will never do. I've already done that for the whole year. See what I did there? Okay. That link will be in the comments section of a YouTube video. I have it already. You can go to it. I think it might be on my, my, actually, let's check.